911 Talk Podcast, Episode 65, for Monday, January 9th, 2011. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, Pilot Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. Quite often, people will complain about our government not performing to their expectations or for being not transparent enough. However, the one agency that I get the privilege to deal with is the Federal Communications Commission. And I have to say, I'm actually quite impressed on how they handle themselves and the information they share with citizens. Since they represent communications, it's only appropriate that they set an example for the others to follow. And in my opinion, they certainly do. If you want a great example of how they have their web presence set up, be sure to check out their beta site at httpmy.fcc.gov where you can sign in, establish a profile, and create a dashboard that'll keep you up to date with the latest activities. From there, you can research any topic that you're interested in, including the one that's the topic of my blog this week. Over the past year, Federal Communication Commission Chairman Julius Janachowski has gone on record several times with his passion for next-generation 911 services in the U.S., enabling citizens to communicate with public safety through the same common mechanisms that they use to communicate with each other each and every day. Primarily, that means enabling multimedia communications, including video, pictures, and text messages. Recently, Chairman Janachowski appointed Henning Schulzery as Chief Technology Officer. Now, for those of you not familiar with Henning, he is considered one of the grandfathers of the Internet with his name on several standards that make up the basic framework of IP connectivity. And I'm sure his presence in the FCC as CTO will fast-track the NG911 goals set forth by Chairman Janachowski. Technologically, there are minimal roadblocks that stand between citizens who need help and public safety who can provide that help. And most experts will agree that with the establishment of common protocols and standards, those challenges can be easily tackled. Last year on June 18th, Nina published the I3 standard, which was a framework for next generation 911 communication, giving the industry a well-needed shot in the arm. There is another challenge, however, that might not be so easy to overcome. That challenge is the financial commitment required by the industry, the carriers, and even the enterprise to make NG911 a reality and not a distant dream. On July 22nd of 2008, this financial challenge was recognized when the Net 911 Act was formally signed into law. Section 101 of that act added a brand new section to the Wireless Communication and Public Safety Act of 1999. This new section provided that, quote, to ensure efficiency, transparency, and accountability in the collection and expenditure of the fee or charge for the supportive implementation of 911 or enhanced 911 services, the commission shall submit a report within one year after the date of enactment of the new and emerging technologies 911 one Improvement Act of 2008 and annually thereafter to the Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation of the Senate and the Committee on Energy and Commerce of the House of Representatives, detailing the status of each state of the collection and distribution of such fees or charges and including findings on the amount of revenues obligated or expended by each state or political subdivision thereof for any other purpose than for which any such fees are specified, unquote. Just before Christmas break last year, the Federal Communications Commission released the third report to Congress on state collection and distribution of 911 and enhanced 911 fees and charges. Now, the states and agencies that did report monies collected in 2010, the total was just shy of $2 billion, or specifically $1,992,667,978. Now, although quite large, that total did not include Arkansas, Kansas, Missouri, Nevada, New Jersey, Oklahoma, Wisconsin, or Wyoming. States were also asked if the spending of 911 dollars needed specific state authorization. Now, the 50 states in the District of Columbia, 63% responded that these funds were controlled at the state level, with an additional 14% controlled either locally or at the state level. However, 18% did not control how 911 funds were spent, and three of the states, or approximately 6%, did not respond at all to the conditions question. Now, one point I personally find disturbing is the fact that some agencies didn't respond. In fact, the paragraph describing the commission efforts to collect this data reads like a collection agency report. March 4th, Bureau sent letters to the Office of the Government of each state with a due date of April 11th. April 26th, the Bureau sent second notice letters to those states and territories that had not yet replied. 
May 24th, Bureau staff placed telephone calls to states that had not yet responded. June 21st, the Bureau sent final notice letters to non-responding states and territories requesting information by July 8th. July 11th, Bureau staff made final outreach calls to non-responding states and territories. Looks like a few different agencies weren't quite sure where several millions of dollars of collected fees were sitting when the nation has its back against the wall, trying to fund next generation 911 services to improve public safety. The public needs to realize what the 911 network is all about and the technology that's needed to make it work. The public also needs to understand the money trail that funds today's E911 network so they can understand where to apply tomorrow's collected fees. NG911 is not going to build itself. It's going to take the dedication and brain trust of today's top IT people. It's going to take the wise spending and investment of service funds that are collected today. Next Generation 911 is not run on the internet. The Next Generation ESI Net or Emergency Services IP Network is run on a high-speed, resilient, managed backbone network that looks very similar to the internet from a design perspective but it affords a flexible, affordable environment that allows public safety to flatten, consolidate, and extend its network. That's something enterprises have been doing for years and have gotten quite good at it. What will NG911 do for you? Simple, two things. It'll save lives and it'll save taxpayer dollars. Make an effort to understand how it works and how it's funded. You'll be doing yourself and the country a favor. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911. 911.